Hey, this is Pastor Tom. Thanks for joining me. In January, we spent time in Ephesians to better understand how we as a church help people follow Jesus. Now we are returning to the gospel according to Matthew, which we've studied on and off for the past few years. In two weeks, we'll start digging into individual passages in Matthew 21. But before that, we are going to do an overview of the chapters. What we'll look at in this preview ties to your Digging Deeper assignment this week, where you look at how the word kingdom is referred to in those chapters. This will help you get you started. Matthew 1 and 2 contain the well-known Christmas history. We discover Jesus comes from the bloodline of the great King David. And then Magi from the east come searching for the king of the Jews. So chapters 1 and 2 create in us an expectation of a kingdom. In Matthew 3, John the Baptist suddenly appears on the scene and preaches, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There are three big questions we need to answer. What is this kingdom? The fact that John uses this term with no explanation means that he is using the term kingdom consistently with how the Old Testament used that term. The second question is, what what does at hand mean? Does it mean already here or that it is near to arriving? We'll have to do a word study on that. Here's the third question. Why is repenting required because the kingdom is at hand? What happens to the Jews if they don't repent? What happens to the kingdom if there is no repentance? Matthew 3 introduces the adult Jesus who is publicly presented as the Messiah at his baptism and immediately has a showdown with Satan. He is victorious, showing that his kingdom will involve the defeat of the powers of darkness. And when Jesus begins his ministry, he proclaims the same things as John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So once again, we'll need to answer those same three questions. What is the kingdom? What does at hand mean? And how is repentance connected? Jesus begins his teaching and his miracles, and we get a glimpse of what the world would be like if people were in this king's kingdom, for Jesus begins to heal and cast out demons. But it's not just the healing of bodies and casting out of demons that defines Jesus' kingship. In chapters 5 through 7, Jesus teaches the ethics of his kingdom. Several times he says, I say to you to teach his law. Yet clearly the kingdom hasn't come yet, for he tells his people to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And yet he expects his followers to live by his ethic even before the kingdom has come. Chapters 8 through 9 show many examples of the authority and power of Jesus through great miracles, like when he both forgave a lame man his sins and healed him. So like in chapter 4, Jesus is proclaiming the kingdom and giving a demonstration of his power as the rightful king. Finally, in chapter 10, Jesus sends out his disciples to proclaim the message of, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and to heal just like he has been doing. This offer of the kingdom is given only to the Jews, and Jesus prepares his disciples for persecution even as he tells them that following him is worth every hardship. All of this sets the stage for how the Jews respond in chapter 11 on. Thanks for joining me. Remember to read over these 10 chapters and look for all the times that the word kingdom is mentioned. God's blessings on your week.